It's well known that the coronavirus attacks the respiratory system. But besides respiratory symptoms, what are the other possible complications of COVID-19? Some COVID-19 patients develop cytokine storm, a devastating overreaction of the immune system. Cytokines are small proteins secreted by cells, and they influence the interactions between cells. Cytokines are important in regulating immunity, inflammation, and hematopoiesis. Cytokines are made by many cell populations, but the predominant producers are immune cells like helper T cells and macrophages. In response to inflammation or infection, these immune cells are activated and they release cytokines which can go on to promote further inflammatory responses. During an infection, cytokines coordinate the response of immune cells to a specific antigen. Cytokines are often produced in a cascade. As one cytokine activates its target cells, it stimulates the cells to make additional cytokines, which subsequently activate additional cells causing further cytokine release. During a cytokine storm, this cascade gets out of control and the levels of some cytokines increase far beyond what's needed. Too many immune cells become activated and they start to attack healthy tissues throughout the body. These immune cells will destroy red and white blood cells and damage the liver. Blood vessel walls open to let immune cells into surrounding tissues, but the vessels get so leaky that the lungs may fill with fluid and blood pressure drops. Blood clots form throughout the body. When organs don't get enough blood, a person can go into shock, risking permanent organ damage or death. A study conducted in China showed that levels of specific cytokines were increased in those patients who were admitted to the ICU compared to those who weren't admitted to the ICU. Several other studies have shown that higher levels of certain cytokines like interleukin-6 are associated with a greater risk of death. This suggests that cytokine storm is associated with more severe coronavirus infections. In coronavirus infections, cytokine storm can also trigger viral sepsis where ongoing viral replication and excessive systemic inflammation can lead to pneumonitis, acute respiratory distress syndrome, respiratory failure, shock, organ failure, secondary bacterial pneumonia, and potentially death. Due to the systemic nature of a COVID-19 infection, it's not just the lungs that we must worry about. COVID-19 can affect several organs throughout the body, the heart, blood vessels, kidneys, brain, and intestines can all be affected by the coronavirus infection. These organs can be directly affected by the virus or indirectly affected due to the hyperinflammation of the cytokine storm and the resulting hypoxia and hypercoagulability. Studies have shown that up to 20% of hospitalized COVID-19 patients had heart damage and up to 44% had arrhythmias. COVID-19 patients can present with elevated cardiac enzymes, signifying cardiac damage and ECG findings similar to a heart attack. It is not known yet how the virus attacks the heart, but similar to the nose and alveoli, the heart cells are rich in ACE2 receptors, which the virus needs to enter the cells. The inflammatory damage of a cytokine storm can result in other cardiac symptoms, including swelling and scarring of cardiac tissues and decreased left ventricular ejection fraction. Given these findings, it's easy to see why this disease can be even more deadly for patients with pre-existing cardiac conditions. With the COVID-19 infection, some patients experience abnormal clotting, which has recently been named COVID-19 Associated Coagulopathy, or CAC. It is characterized by elevated levels of D-dimer and fibrinogen and a rise in inflammatory markers such as C-reactive protein or CRP. The coagulopathy can worsen over time and some patients develop disseminated intravascular coagulation known as DIC. 
Clotting abnormalities during a COVID-19 infection can affect small vessels of many organ systems and result in increased mortality. Two of the most severe outcomes are pulmonary embolism and stroke. Some COVID-19 patients develop swollen, painful, purple, or blue nodules in their fingers or toes. This has become commonly referred to as COVID toes. They are most often seen in pediatric and young adult patients before they develop any other symptoms of the disease. The exact mechanism is not clear, but it has been postulated that it could be related to blood vessel constriction, excessive clotting, or a condition known as purpura fulminans, where inflammation secondary to an infection causes the body to make microclots in the blood vessels of the finger, toes, and nose. It is also thought that blood vessel constriction in the lungs contributes to the extremely low blood oxygen levels seen in some COVID-19 patients. Blood vessel constriction could explain why patients with pre-existing damage to their blood vessels, such as those with diabetes or hypertension, are more seriously affected by COVID-19. COVID-19 patients can present with acute kidney injury and protein or blood in the urine. The kidneys have numerous ACE2 receptors facilitating viral entry into renal cells. Close to 50% of COVID-19 patients who are in the ICU develop acute kidney injury. As many as 20 to 30% of COVID-19 ICU patients require dialysis and some die from renal failure. However, it's not just the virus that is compromising kidney function. The use of ventilators and antiviral drugs in COVID-19 treatment also increases the risk of kidney damage. Additionally, cytokine storm can dramatically reduce blood flow to the kidneys and result in kidney damage. 5 to 10% of COVID-19 patients present with neurological symptoms or loss of consciousness. COVID-19 patients can experience seizures and encephalitis, as well as strokes due to heightened blood clotting. It is presumed that the coronavirus enters the brain using ACE2 receptors to cause these effects, and the virus has also been found in the cerebrospinal fluid of infected patients. Cytokine storm is also thought to contribute to brain swelling and other neurological symptoms. The transient loss of the sense of smell and taste are other neurological findings, but it's not yet clear why these occur. Studies suggest that up to 60% of COVID-19 positive patients could experience smell and taste loss. These symptoms are often seen within three days of infection onset in patients with mild cases. Up to 30% of COVID-19 patients can present with diarrhea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. This is likely because ACE2 receptors are also abundant in the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. Viral RNA has been found in around 50% of COVID-19 patients' stool samples. However, while the virus may be present in fecal matter, the risk of fecal transmission appears to be low. That's it for now. If you want to improve your understanding of COVID-19, make sure to register for a free Mastery trial account and check out our CME-accredited courses. So stay safe and see you next time.